when writing the story of your life to come, don't let anyone else to hold the pen. As an eight-year boy, I was recovering from a poison that almost killed me. I asked my grandma, Grandma, how to write the story of my life to come. And she said, to help you, my boy, I'm going to give you the title of a chapter you should consider in your story. Live well, love, be loved, prevent harm for others, and be a beacon of hope for others. And this chapter should be guiding your life story to come. And they should always drive your choices and your decision. But no one thing. That not all your actions and decisions are best for others. So before you take any action, remember this. Do not do to others what you don't want to be done to you. That will help you in writing the story of your life to come. I am really blessed to be alive and proud to be a man I am today. I could have died from poison, not once, but twice. I could have died from snake bite. I could have died from strong river current. I could have died from hunger and thirst. Certainly, this part of my life, I could not write it. But the man I became today, I did hold the pen and wrote the whole story. I am very lucky to witness my story inspiring people. The good thing about adversity is that it will help you recognize your strengths. You are always learning who you really are by every passing birthday. And that why change is fundamental in life. If your life freezes, you stop to exist. Because life is a drama unfolding every second of your existence. So what is drama? Drama is a journey mingled with uncertainty. Life is a journey mingled with uncertainty. Before you take in your new task of writing your life to come, have you come to the conclusion that what is given can be taken away? Have you concluded that you will no doubt reach the end anytime soon? Have you concluded you may not control how you may reach the final destination? Have you structured honest conflict with the truth that creates doubt and tension in what the story might be? The truth is that whatever your ability may be, you don't have the power to influence events, past, but you can write the story of our life by changing the present. The truth is that whatever your ability may be, you don't have the power to influence events in the past, but you can write the story of your life to come by challenging the present. There is no secret of how to live a successful life because each life is unique but all what there is lesson learned from every trauma every plot every adversity and every mistake and that will prepare you for this uncertain moment to come do always feel young in your thinking be rebellious in your doing and determined to prove that no matter what is your past, no matter what your status is, you have the power to live a successful life as defined by you only. If you do that, 
you will know what your future holds. Successful life has no guidelines, no heart, no soft rule, but one simple principle. Do unto others what you want done to you. You know, another fundamental thing I have learned to live happy and fulfilling life is to like the main character in my life. Because that character is, the character should be you. It is not yet. In the past, I naively seek for assurance for liking myself in order approval on how special I am by thinking that if people like me, that means there is something special about me. And then, I understood that no one has the time for that. Most people are preoccupied for disliking themselves in the first place, how they have time to like me. So be selfish. Like the main character in your life, which should be you, if it's not yet, before others will like you. But then, how do you make a selfish character likable? Be kind. Be generous. Be funny. Be lovable. Be considerate. Be compassionate. And always stay true to yourself. The best stories infuse wonder. I was eight. Me and two of my friends in the refugee camp ate the poison food that was destined to kill their father, cooked by their mother. The poison was so deadly that my two friends died instantly. And when I was brought to my grandmother in a wheelbarrow, unconscious, she said, that is my boy. His middle name is Miracle and he will not die in my watch. I will not bury him. And she rushed me to hospital at least 20 miles from the camp in a wheelbarrow. I end up in a coma for a few days before slowly and slowly coming back to myself. And when the doctor looked at this frail kid, he looked straight at my grandmother and said, it is a miracle he has survived. And my grandmother said, yes, I know it. It is a miracle. And his middle name is Miracle. I was bed struck for a few months. And many transfusions later, I lived for my grandmother to tell my story. And she said, I am special boy. That's her own word. She proudly keep telling her friends and family that I am here for a purpose. I don't know if my grandmother really believed that. But one thing that I know, I didn't want to disappoint her faith in me. And whatever I end up being good at, I would just strive to be worthy of the second chance I was given to demonstrate that I am special, that I am here for a purpose. For me, there is no greater ability than the gift of inspiring another human being to believe and thrive, inspiring them to be still just for a few moments in the day and have them surrender to wonder. When you tap to the affirmation of gratitude of being alive, it reaches you almost to a cellular level. And when a human being life inspires another being, it is like you are giving them an ability to be reborn, different, but better. It is like you are carrying smoke with a beautiful sense. Writing your own life story to come is simple. Use what you know. Draw from it. It doesn't always mean plot or fact. It means capturing the truth 
from your experiences, the adversity, the resilience, and the joy of life. Expressing value you personally feel deep down in your core. Who am I again? I am a miracle. And so you too. And that's what ultimately led me to speak to you through this video today.